Hi, I'm John R., and I'm your professor here at the Online Jewelry Academy. Today I'm going to show you how to make a simple band. Now this band could be worn as an engagement ring or maybe even a wedding ring. It's quick and easy to make and looks good on. So let me clear the desk here and we'll get started. I've set up the table to start making the ring. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to measure my ring size and I'm going to use the ring gauge. Now I'm going to make a little ring. So I'm going to make one for my pinky and your clients will be doing this too. They'll be trying things on and sometimes it's too loose or sometimes they just can't get their finger through it. And then you'll find that Cinderella size where it fits just right. So I'm going to make a size 8 ring for my little finger. Okay, so once you've determined the size, then what you need to do is you need to transfer that information to your wire stock. And again, I'm using a half round sterling silver wire. So what I want to do is I'm going to come to the ring gauge ruler and I'm going to open up my pair of calipers and I can determine from end to the eight that a size 8 is approximately 56 millimeters. Okay. Now, when you look at the ring gauge really closely, the ring gauge ruler I should say, it tells you that you need to add three times the metal thickness to the measurement shown. So what you need to do is you need to take your stock and just measure the width of it. And in this case, it tells me that my wire is two millimeters thick. So three times two is six. So I'm going to add six to my original measurement, which was 56 millimeters. So if I add another six, I'm going to be at, any quick answers? 62. I believe that's correct. Yeah. Okay. So 62 millimeters. So I'm going to lock it down. And what I would do is I would try to find an end of the wire that's perpendicular to the edge, in other words, a square corner, so that I could mark the wire. Now, I've said a lot. Let me go back and break it down for you a little bit better, okay? So before I can mark the wire, I have to make sure that I have an edge that's square. Now, this big caliper here is great for measuring, but this caliper, which is only like a $5 item, if you take it apart, this top piece gives you a perfect square, like a machinist square. And what you can do is you can take your wire and you could just hold it right at the base, just like this, and it will tell you whether or not you've got a perfect square corner. Okay? If you do have a square edge, then what you can do is take the larger caliper and from one push it against one edge and just scratch the material. Now if it's hard to see, you could always go back over it with your Sharpie pen and just darken it in. But it's important to measure accurately in order to get the ring to fit. Okay. Now once you've gotten your measurement applied to your stock, it's time to cut it. So I'm going to sit down at the bench. Now you always want to sit comfortably with your feet flat on the floor and sit up straight. Jewelers don't slouch and they don't cross their legs. So I'll take the stock and I'm just going to hold it on the bench pin and I'm going to use my jeweler saw to cut it. Now if this is the first time that you're using your jeweler saw, you need to cut to one side of the line. Don't cut right on the line. And you want to remember which side is going to become the ring and which side isn't if you have to. Make a little X so that you know which is which. But you want to cut on the outside of that line. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to start the blade moving. And now I'm going to cut. Just smoothly at a good pace. Don't rush. Use the whole blade. There it is. That's the ring. Here's the excess. Now, I had squared up one side ahead of time, and look at that. I cut it at a funny angle on the other side. So, you need to square up the other side. To do this, you want to use your file. 
Now, you can position your file in one hand. Don't do this. Don't lead with your finger. Just grip the file. If you want to do a little bit of it, it's okay, but it's not a good idea to apply too much pressure in that way. And I'm pushing the wire stock against the bench pin so that I can see the line. So if I start to file, I should be able to see how I file down to the line. Now the zero cut file cuts very quickly. Okay, one more swipe and I think I'm done. Now what I can do is I can take the top of the brass caliper and once again check to make sure that I have an edge that's perpendicular to the edge of the wire. So right now, if I use this ruler as an example, my ring blank looks like this. I've got length with two sides that are parallel to one another. And that's going to be easier to make a ring out of because when these two ends come around, they're going to butt up and kiss one another perfectly without any gaps in between that I need to try to fill. Okay, once you get to this point, you're ready to bend your ring. But if the stock's a little bit stiff or work hardened, you may need to anneal. You may need to soften the metal with the application of heat. Anyway, let me clear the table and let me show you the bending process. Okay, I've laid out the tools that you need in order to bend the ring into the right shape for soldering. Now, most people would think that the right shape for soldering would be a perfect circle. You actually want it to be more like a capital letter D, sort of round at the bottom with the two ends coming in almost flat and coming in, butting up and kissing each other. The way to do that is to use a half round pair of pliers. Now I could use the forming pliers or the bow benders, but these are probably the best ones to use. Now what you want to do is find the rounded jaw of the plier and put that against the in what will be the inside of the ring. Now, you want to basically start at one end and just bend that over a little bit, just like that. Then turn the ring around, put the curved jaw against the inside of the ring, and bend that side over a little bit too. So right now you have like a big U. Now we want to bring these two pieces over but I want to show you how to use the other pliers while I can. Okay, the bow benders, these almost have like a parrot beak sort of look to them. And this little piece right here, this little collet, that's just to protect your metal, your silver, from getting any scratches on it. I just took a piece of sheet metal and bent it in and then hammered it around in order to make that collet. Anyway, these are great for making a tight bend. And if you've gotten your bend this far, if you just bend with these, watch. See how like magic, they just move it over. You could actually do the whole ring like that, but I wouldn't recommend it because you start to get these little high points like that, and sometimes they're hard to bend out or hammer out with the mallet. So if you can get away with a half round pair of pliers, go for it. Okay, so once I've bent the two on the outside up, then I'm going to bring them over the top. And it's really easy. You just have to do it a little bit at a time. Just make slow progress. Slow and steady progress gets it done. Okay, so I'm about there right now. Not quite exactly where I want to be, but getting close. Like I said, the point is, is that I want to bend the top part where the seam is going to be down almost flat so they bump up and kiss without any gapping in between. Okay, so this is essentially what, what I want. A seam that's nice and closed and tight with no light leaking through it so that it will easily solder together. Okay, the next step is going to be to solder. So I need to clean up again and set up for solder. Alright, so let me show you how to do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my flux and with my paintbrush I'm going to take nice, not too much, but a nice healthy coating of flux and I'm just going to paint the seam. Now some people might paint the whole ring 
that's not necessarily wrong, but you have to remember, if you're using, say, silver solder with copper, the solder could run anywhere where there's flux. So to control where the solder flows, just put the flux where you want the solder to flow. All right, so I pre-cut these pieces of solder to about one millimeter square, and you can place one pallion of solder approximately every three millimeters. So this piece of metal, I would say, just guessing, is probably about five millimeters thick or wide. So I'm gonna just place two little pieces of solder directly on the seam. And I want the solder to bridge both sides of that seam so that it has a better chance of flowing into the seam. Okay, now that this is set up, I'm ready to start. But before I do that, let me explain something. Flux goes through three different phases. Right now it's in its first phase, which is where it's wet and full of water. The next phase is for that water to evaporate out and it becomes rather gummy. But as the water evaporates out, if you, if you heat it too quickly, the water evaporation can actually throw the pallions of solder off of the seam. So heat it slowly to dry it out. And then the third phase is you're going to see it turn into sort of a white crust. And at that point, it should start to clear, and then the solder flows. So knowing these cues is a good way to keep track of where you're at within the process, especially when you're first starting. Okay, so I'm going to turn on my torch and light it. Now, I want to just lightly brush the flame over the rings so that the flux begins to dry out. And it doesn't hurt to pick up your pallion, at, or, I'm sorry, your solder pick at this point if you need to move a pallion. Okay, so I'm going a little slow, just trying to dry out that flux. And you can see how it sort of swells and bubbles up a little bit. That's okay, we just don't want it to move so quickly that it throws a pallion off. Okay, so once it's dry, get in immediately and heat underneath. So you want the, the heat to radiate through the metal, up to the top, warming the pallions and causing them to flow and melt into the seam. Okay, so you can see how the flux at this point is sort of in that gummy phase. Now, as we heat the ring, you'll notice that the ring will start to oxidize, but the area that's painted with the flux will remain clean. And that's because the, so the flux prevents oxidation. All right, now we're getting to that clear part, and here you can see the solder beginning to look a little bit more wet, and there it flows right into the seam. Okay, as soon as you are done soldering, take your heat away. The biggest mistake that beginners make is they either don't use enough heat, so nothing ever happens, or they heat things too long or too much. If you heat too much, you might melt something, but if you heat too long, what you can do is you can build up too many oxides on the surface of the metal, and it makes it dull, and it's hard to clean up. Okay, so this is done soldering. All we need to do is quench it. Now, it's a good idea to have insulated tweezers so you don't burn your fingers, and you may want to quench the tool as well. That way, if you bump up against it or you need to handle it, it's cold to the touch and it's not going to burn you. Alright, so now this is cool and I can just take it out of the water and there you go. It's soldered shut. Now when soldering takes place, it happens at a temperature that's well above the annealing temperature. So anytime you solder anything, you've also annealed it. So once I pickle this and clean it and dry it off, I'm ready to stretch it and round it into the shape proper to be a ring that will fit my finger. All right, let me clean this up and I'll show you the next steps. Well, I've taken the, uh, the ring out of the pickle and neutralized it in a little bit of water and baking soda. And now it's nice and clean and it almost looks a little bit white. The reason for that is that that's the fine silver coming through to the surface. Now before we go any further, what we need to do is brass brush it or scratch brush it. So you need a little bit of soap to lubricate. The material should be wet, and you can see it almost makes it look bright and shiny and new. So I just need to go over this whole surface. Now, 
people always wonder, do we do this just to make the material look shiny? The answer is no. The reason why you scratch brush or brass brush is to make sure that you remove any residual oxidation that wasn't removed by the pickle. Okay, let me rinse this off and put these things away so that we can move on. But you can see how the ring looks nice and shiny after being brass brushed. Now, in order to bring the ring into the round, you need to have a mandrel. They sell a lot of different mandrels out there, so you want to be sure that you have one that's solid. Don't get a hollow one. Hollow ones are used by jewelry stores to take measurements off pre-existing rings. A solid one is used to actually beat your ring again so that you can make it nice and round. Okay, the ring is soft because it was annealed, and luckily I didn't use too much solder so that there's not a, a hump of solder there. If there was, I would have to file that off, otherwise my size wouldn't be true. Alright, so I'll put this onto the mandrel, and you can see how it doesn't really fit because it's not round. But what I can do is I can push this down. You want to push as hard as you can and try to take it as far down the mandrel as you can possibly get it. Now if I turn the mandrel to the camera this way, you can see how there are definite gaps on the, between the mandrel and the ring. These gaps need to be struck first. So what you're going to do is you're going to brace your mandrel against a work surface. Normally I do this on like a, a tree stump, but I'll do it here so you can see it. And what you want to do is hit these high parts first. And let me come to the other side. And I'll come around again. Okay, now that I've reduced the distance between the ring and the mandrel, it's dropped further down on this mandrel. So I'm at about a six and three quarters and I'm going for an eight. So I have to go about that much further. Now to do this, to help you out, sometimes what you can do is you can push the mandrel against the edge of a work surface while you hit towards yourself, hitting against the edge of the ring. double check where I'm at in terms of my size and I'm almost there I just have a little hair to go okay I am perfectly at an eight now sometimes when you finish the ring seems to be stuck all you need to do is turn your mandrel upside down hit the edge of the ring and it comes right off so now it's perfectly round and it fits my hand. So the next step would be to finish with the flex shaft. All I need to do is apply a little bit of pressure and a little compound to a buff and I can get the outside, change to maybe a different profile and I can get the inside. There, and now we have a finished ring with a nice shiny finish to it that's ready to wear. I hope you enjoyed making this project and I hope you'll check out our other projects and videos as well as our products on the onlinejewelryacademy.com. Thanks again.